Hi, welcome to Gridiron Gurus. I'm Travis Lazarza, alongside Drew Bonifant from the Kennebec Journal and Morning Sentinel. It's week, week eight of the high school football season, the final week of the season. Rivalry games all over the state. We've got coaches from one of the biggest rivalries in the state right here, from Coney B.L. Lippert, from Gardner Joe White. Guys, thanks for being here. Uh, let's try to turn this into like a wrestling uh, oh, well. smack talk kind of event here. Um, just You guys both played in this game as well. What are some of your, your thoughts about this uh, rivalry that goes back over a century? Uh, it's a great rivalry, you know, we, we talked about it last year, we have memories as players, as coaches, and growing up just around it, and, uh, you know, every year adds to that, and actually, you know, like, I think I remember more from my coaching days and my playing sure. days that were for a little further removed now, uh, but it's just fun, you know, and you can just feel it, you know, at practice all week, and you get text messages throughout the week from, uh, you know, former teammates, former players that maybe played for my dad, said, hey, you know, if you're going to win one, win this one. Sure. So we've won some other ones, by, by the way, they don't really care. <laughs> right. yeah, that that this is matter. the one they care about, so it's pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. You you start to hear from people you haven't heard from in, in a year, and uh, they they text you, or some will show up to practice, and uh, you know just hang out and watch. And, mm -hmm. and there's definitely a vibe that's that's different about this week. Hey, you hear some stories about things that used to happen with bonfires and and rallies and everything like that, but it still seems like there's still a good sense in the community for when this game comes about. I remember seeing signs driving through Gardner, beat Coney, and um, you know all the way around when you were going through Augusta. So I mean, is it still it's, it's still something that commands the attention of the community as far as you guys are able to tell? Yeah, I don't think it's like it was when I was a kid. And maybe mm -hmm. it's just being young. It feels like the rivalry was bigger in the late right. 80s, early 90s. Um, you know, I'm not sure. But I think, you know, I think schools now, like we have a rally uh, on Friday, but it's like an all-sports rally. It's for, you know, the field hockey team who's in the playoff right. game and cross-country as the states or something this weekend. So it used to be maybe more focused on Coney Guard. It was all about football. That's mm -hmm. all, the, you know. Right. And I think schools are more, you know, cognizant of the, you know, the whole student body. And whether that's good, bad, or indifferent is up to everyone to decide. Um, but, yeah, I think the, our teams certainly are aware of it in individual, you know, pockets in the community. But... I'm not sure we see quite as many signs, quite as much, you know, uh, hoopla. But I don't think that impacts the players or coaches. In any, and it might be different in Gardner, but it's not quite what it was, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, you know, it, it is a little bit different, um, you know, as far as what the, the town looks like week leading up. And, and mm -hmm. I've, I've mentioned before uh, doing parades and, and things like that and, and rallies in the gym. And it is it's become a little more of a spirit week that's all inclusive to other uh, mm -hmm. sports. And, and that's, that's great. Uh, there is just a lot going on. Um, last night, uh, for example, there's uh, a soccer game on the on the Hope Field and, and a field hockey playoff game and a volleyball game in the gym and there's just really a lot going on every day. And uh, you know, I mean, 20, 25 years ago, there may not have been as much, you know. And so, uh, yeah, the focus is on everyone and uh, the rallies are all inclusive and and but I, I don't think it takes away from you know too much because the kids are focused and ready to play. So, I, I feel like it's kind of a interesting um, notion to this rivalry in terms of how it's shaken out in terms of when you look at other rivalries either throughout the region throughout the country a lot of them are that might be one-sided you know you'll see like one one team's winning in a five to one rate or something like that or that might be dead even no team really establishes dominance over the other one but this one's interesting in that you know there are stretches of coney dominance there are stretches of gardner dominance there are you'll have generations of, of gardner kids who never lost to coney generations of coney kids who never lost to gardner so I mean, it's been it's been pretty it's been pretty interesting how it's shaken out from that perspective. Yeah, and, you know, and, and we always pay attention to the overall total. You know, because yeah. we don't want to be like maybe the head coach when they, for us right, we've been right, ahead for yeah. a while. <laughs> you don't want to be the head coach if they come back and tie it. So we always pay attention to that overall number and you know, keep track of your wins as a coach, how your wins as a player. I know I was one and two as a player. I don't want to highlight that too much. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, my senior year, thankfully, uh, but Nate Surgeon prevented us from winning too many others. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you know, it's a rivalry. Those those, those numbers matter. Um, but to these kids, you know, they're just looking at playing Friday night. You know, they don't. They probably have no idea what the. And I don't know what the exact total is right this second. Um, I know we're ahead by a little bit, but uh, so for them, you know, I don't think that they they care too much about the overall. They just want to play in there. You know, two or three, four, how many they get to play in uh, Cody Gardner games and want to win those. Do your players ask about the history of it at all? I mean, they both they, they know you both played in the game. Obviously, do they ever? You know, say, hey, you know, coach, what was the game like when you were playing? We have to playing? tell them sometimes. To, <laughs> we, <have> to, <laughs> we, uh, we remind them right. <laughs> uh, a little bit about the glory days. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I think, um, 
you know, I remember uh, being a sophomore and, and playing in the 100th game, and, and this is the 140th game, and that's probably, you know, what they'll remember most about it. Right. Uh, we, we've tried in the past to show them uh, some film of, uh, you know, the 1980s teams playing, and, and they look at <laughs> and it. And to get the old VCR yeah. out to yeah. do that. Yeah. It's kind of grainy, and they don't really care because they think there's a bunch of old guys out there playing, and where's the spread, you know, shotgun, and all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Both so, teams yeah, in the team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, yeah, it's it's a little different than when we were growing up. When I was uh, playing, you know, we tried to emulate former players, and, and we knew, you know, who Jimmy LeClaire was and, and Chris mm -hmm. Whalen and, and Pete Story and, and, and those guys, uh, you know. But I, I don't know that it's like that necessarily now, but it could be kids that play now will remember Alonzo O'Connor and, and things like that. So that's that's always nice. And last year we had the interesting uh, scenario where both teams were playing for the right to go to the playoffs. I think both teams came in two and five, correct? Is that yes. Because record. Um, and this year, I mean, it looks like both of you guys are going are going to the playoffs, and B and C respectively. So does that take take something away to the game? Does it add something to the game? Just in that you know both teams are are in the midst of seasons that are going to be post playoff seasons, so it's not quite a you know last hurrah for either one. I think that adds to it because yeah. I think when you know it's your last game as a senior, you can, it's almost like a draining experience. This is my mm -hmm. last Monday practice. This is my and so the, the game becomes like almost like a burden. Like oh, it's my last. And so now okay. you know you know you're gonna your career is gonna move ahead. You got at least one more week to play. So I think in some ways it kind of it, it doesn't diminish the game. It actually adds to it because you're gonna be playing with a you know positive outlook. You're not gonna be at halftime thinking oh this is the last time I'm ever gonna right. do this. And so we I've played in situations where I knew it was my last game. Yeah. Uh, coached in situations where you know the season's about to be over. Maybe you're ready for it to be over, um, but you know, thankfully, both teams this year going to the playoffs, and so you know, it's 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 a week that unto itself. You kind of separate it out, and it's Coney Gardner week. But regardless of the outcome, you know, you got another game or two or more left to play. So I think it actually adds to that more than it might detract. As some people might think it would take away, but I think it actually adds. Yeah, I would agree with that, and uh, you know, I think. Um, we, we've had conversations with our seniors about, you know, the last of everything and this is the last time you're going to play this outfit and, and uh, you know, things like that. But I, I don't think they get hung up on that too much. Uh, I think it's we've tried to emphasize one game at a time, the next game. And uh, so it happens to be a big one. It's an important one, you know, part of the, the tradition and, and the history they're, they're going to be a part of. And, and uh, so we're, we're fortunate to be able to, to have a shot to play uh, the following week. So I, I think that does add some excitement to it. Yeah. I always feel like I have to say, "Looks like you're going to the playoffs," because I never trust. The, I never trust <laughs> yeah. myself with the yeah. heel point, man. Yeah. I just feel like I'm going to say, "Well, you guys are going to the playoffs," and then you're going to see a bunch of scenarios shake out and a team drops yeah. out. Yeah. I don't know yeah. so much yeah. of that, but yeah. well, BL, you guys are currently in second place in the PTCB um, for the minute. For the, yeah, you know the heel points <laughs> might have changed yeah. in the last yeah. five minutes yeah. since we started the show. Um, what does it look like? You guys could end up with with a win a lot. I mean, it's it's a yeah. mess. I, the way I'm looking at it, it looks like the winner of Lawrence Meselowski might get first. Yes. You know, and Skowhegan, where they to win, would drop to second. Is there any way you guys can keep the bye? I uh, think so. If Meso wins, I think they go to one. And I think, based on my expert analysis from people smarter than me, <laughs> since we beat Meso and Skowhegan didn't, since we beat Brewer and they didn't play them, that's too like. Bumps for us. I don't know. That's yeah. the word I heard. So yeah. I don't. It's conceivable we end up second if like all four games they go our way. I think there's more scenarios we end up third. I don't think we can drop to four. But again, I don't. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. So yeah. you know, it's not something we burden our kids with. They You're going to be home. It's yeah. just a matter of it's next week or if right. you get a week off to yeah. to get a buy. So, yeah. So I don't know. We I tried over the weekend to have some people look at it, but there's just too many scenarios, and I can't figure out. You know, yeah. Winslow and the Lawrence thing because Lawrence. You know, every time Winslow wins, that helps Lawrence, yeah. and so I, I literally can't figure it out. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't even bother. Yeah. Been a, the heel point uh, thing is as confusing as it is. Uh, I think I've never even really tried to figure it out, <laughs> but um, it's it's helped us uh, motivate our guys. Uh, you know, you're uh, one and one, one and two, and you're still in third place. Um, you know, Morse uh, first game was a win for us, and they continue with well, six and one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it's keeping us you know in the mix. Uh, we've played all the top teams. Uh, and, you know, when you're one in five, you start to, you know, the kids start to, you know, think like, oh, man, here we go. We're, we're, we're having difficulty climbing out of this hole. And we, we come down and say, hey, no, wait, look, you're in fourth place. And, you know, if you, yeah. If yeah, you win sending, out, you might host a playoff game. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they get, they get jazzed up. Sending it, gift so. baskets down the Kennebec River to the folks in Bath for their continued <laughs> success, yes. right? Yep. Yeah, and they play Levitt this weekend, too. So if they were to beat Levitt, that would really help. That would really yeah. shake yeah. things up. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it's like you see 
how the heal points can help and hurt when, when like you know, like, yeah, like we're saying with the scenarios with, with Kony, there's a, there's a good chance that you can go in with a, with a, with a better record than Meselonski, haven't beaten Meselonski, and still finish behind Meselonski, which, what sport does that happen? Yeah, it doesn't happen a lot. But, you know, they've had, you know, two, you know, two B South crossovers that are, mm-hmm. like, high, high quality opponents, so you could make the case they had a tougher schedule, yeah. so. But they didn't beat any of them either, right, so they, yeah, didn't, get, they yeah. didn't get points for it. Yeah, I don't know, and that's why I just, yeah. I can't really keep track of that. In the old Crabtree system, they'd have been sitting, you know, in Fat City just because of yeah, playing those opponent opponents. records, yeah. right, exactly, so, so too you, much for me. So you yeah. could look at that and say, like, oh, that's a point, that's a, that's a mark against the heel points, but on the other hand, with, with your team, that you were, You've been playing more competitively than your record than your record has indicated pretty much the whole season. With how you played Cape, how you played Levitt, how you played York. So in that case, it is good. There's a system in there that allows you to that allows you guys to stay on track for the playoff berth that you're in line for. Otherwise, you'd be looking at a one and five record and being out and being like, well, we we played better than that. We we deserve yeah. more than this. Right. So. Yeah. Right. It, it's been it's been a challenge. Uh, you you worry about them. Uh, they the kids a little bit because they. They gave their all those first three games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that, that fourth game against York uh, probably should have won that game, um, but you know, it was they were pretty dejected after that, and it was a it was a penalty that called back a long run uh, on us uh, late in the game with about six minutes left that would have sealed it. And you know, they started to think, oh, geez, what are we going to do? You know, to climb out of this. And um, you know, they 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 know that they can play with these teams. Uh, you started to see him get a little bit tired. I think weeks uh, five and six, uh, the the uh, the gap in scores, you know, was was much more significant than weeks three and, and four prior. Uh, we we started to get uh, thumped a little bit, and so mm-hmm. we licked the wounds and we're ready to to uh, to go play Coney and 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 make a playoff uh, well, appearance. I saw you guys against Winslow, and I think I even said to you after the game for a while, it didn't feel like it was no. a game, you know, the final score was 41-7, but it never felt like that until maybe the last six minutes of the game. Right, and, and we responded to, um, they, they had pretty good field position to start, opened up uh, the, their drive with a score, and, and we responded with one, right. 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, but you, you're not going to win if you turn the ball over six times, especially mm-hmm. when you're driving and, and you right. fumble. Um, and, and so we had some opportunity to put points on the board, and we didn't. We let it get away from us, and we gave. Uh, they had a couple of big uh, opportunities on, on turnovers. <clears throat> they had a pick that, that could just well have been a pick six. The kid ran it back to like right to the one, three, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, then the fumble that they picked up, scoop and scored. And then our luck, they managed to fumble it again. The guy behind them picked it up and continued to go. And, <laughs> and so it just the kind of the wheels fell off the bus, and, and we uh, ended up being a blowout. But I, I thought earlier on in the game, we, we hung. Pretty tough with them. They're, they're a good football team, Winslow. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of blowouts, it's been an issue this week. Our colleague at the Portland Press Herald, Steve Craig, wrote a good story about how it seems to be more and more of them in high school football this year than in uh, past years. Um, I asked both of you guys who are right there on the sidelines every week, are you feeling like games are more lopsided? I mean, maybe not in your league, yeah. BL, because it's been such a crazy competitive league, but for the most part, our there are a lot more haves than have-nots in, in high school football in Maine right now? I, I don't think it's any different than any other year, to be honest with you. I think uh, they tried with the crossover scheduling to maybe set it up so that, you know, the B-Cell team that's the one seed on paper, like a Falmouth or Marshwood or Kennebunk would play a Meso or a Brunswick who on paper was one of the top ones sure. in our league. And I think for the most part that's worked out. Um, but it's just a matter of there's going to be some teams that are down and hoping hoping to change their fortunes in the you know coming year. So I'm not sure there's a perfect formula to, to get it where there's no blowouts. I think the 35 point spread and running time in the second half has really actually kind of helped that scenario for both teams. You know when you're ahead in those scenarios, you don't really know how to handle it. When you're behind, you're, you're like, okay, this is not you know this is yeah. not helping our self esteem real, real much. So uh, I think that's helped. You know sometimes if you're getting blown out, it doesn't really feel so bad because the second half is over in like you know 26 <laughs> minutes. Um, so I, I just don't know what else they can do beyond looking at it every year okay this team should be good let's put them up a class or down you know and that's just not going to happen so it's just a it's a byproduct it's like that in every sport right basketball games there's blowouts and maybe in football it's just more you know uh, more obvious because you know physically the teams aren't matched up well but i don't think there's anything you can do about it uh, and it's tough if you have to fight the cycle of uh you know maybe uh you graduate uh some talent and you got some yeah. younger kids that you're trying to feel out and, and they haven't come along as, as much as as you would have liked, or or they get hurt, or, or they take up another sport, or you know, all these things happen. I mean, I, I can't help but think about Brunswick uh, having been on top uh, for a few years and, mm-hmm. and, and now right. really really struggling. And you you know, we we were there uh, three you know a couple three years ago uh, trying to gain a footing, and, and so I, I really have a, a little different perspective on being in class.
I see uh, playing competitively. I think that's the key word, being able to compete. Because um, no one wants to go out and get you know, 70 points hung on them. You know, Belfast this year has had to take it on the chin. Yeah. Um, right. and, and that's just not fun. Um, you know, and so I, I, I haven't seen it uh, be a major uh, factor. But again, I'm not, you know, um, it, it's not like it was in, in Gardner a couple, three years ago. Right. Yeah, that'd be interesting to look at how many of those programs that are in that Belfast and Hamden position are teams that are just the, the teams just aren't ready yet. You know, they have young they have young players coming up, but they they just need a few more years to grow into that. And which teams are just this is as good as they can generate, and it's still just not good enough to be competitive. You yeah. know, mark against the program. Yeah, I think it's a lot of it's much ado about nothing. There's mm-hmm. blowouts in sports at every level. In every sport, whether you know high school football or basketball or ice hockey, baseball, it doesn't matter. It just it seems like maybe now some of the teams that are getting beat are squawking more about it. I don't know if it's because you know the teams that used to be hammers are now nails. I'm looking at like you know Bangor's been taking it on the chin a little bit this year. Uh, Belfast, mm-hmm. some of these programs that historically have been strong are just you know not adjusting to to being the team that's got to rebuild and regroup and. I you know, also wonder if the way the game is played now has something to do with it. You know, when I was playing in high school, I graduated in 1990, we ran a wing tee that if we threw 15 times in a game, that was throwing a lot. Mm-hmm. Now you've got teams like you guys at Coney and Skowhegan and you know, schools that spread it out, and that gives a more wide-open game with a chance to you know, score in the 40s and 50s more. If we beat a team 28-7, to 7, that was a blowout. All right. You know, now that's just a the game when you pass the ball. Right, so more yep. plays right. In a game, you get more so. opportunity to run it up. I'm yeah. thinking like you know, Skowhegan and Lawrence. I just saw them play 58, 56 <laughs> this week. Yeah. That wasn't a blow, but right, that's you a know, lot it was points. one of those just you know scoring by the second. Yeah, this is most teams are you know over the course of a 30 year period are going to go through cycles. It's it's odd sure. to see Bangor struggling because I mean when I was in high school they were this mm-hmm. trucking everybody you know yeah. so mm-hmm. um and, you know and when I first started we were on a 27 game losing streak when I started coaching and you know and. We, in, in the interim, we, we won a state championship in there, and then you know it's just you're gonna have peaks and valleys, and it's tough to ride out the you know when you're in the valley and kind of trying to motivate your kids, but it's cyclical, and I think most yeah. you know programs they you know, rebuild the, at the youth level, and you know but that's hard to have that patience and wait four or five years for it to come to fruition. So um, I just think it's gonna be like you said, it happens at every sport at every level, and it's just uh, it's impossible to, to get. Yeah, you can only do so much, yeah. and I think what they've done has helped, but I don't know what else you can do. Yeah, and you wonder how much of it is the, the, that they just put in these these correct these fixes in the off season. The NBA did to kind of hopefully fix this ball issue. If that's why they're, what, that's why everybody's talking oh, about yeah. it is like it could be. It's yeah. like we we just made an effort to kind of clean this up, and now it's still there. Versus if they didn't, if they just kind of kept kept the status quo from last year, if there would be much of a um, much much of a ten, much attention being brought to the, the amount of blow that's happening. Something to consider. Mm-hmm. True. Games this week. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the Oak Hill uh, Lisbon game. I feel like I say Oak Hill every, <laughs> every yeah. week, but um, they just, I mean, they, they play themselves back into the playoff mix with their, you know, big win against the with, with Monmouth, one by two points, big interception on the goal line. Uh, and so now they're, they're in the eighth spot in Class D South, so they're just in. Um, and, but Lisbon is coming, you know, uh, six and one, seeded third in Class D South, so that's going to be, I don't know if, uh, again, it's heel points math. I don't know if lose, <laughs> if uh, losing that takes them out, or uh, I know winning would would do a bunch a bunch to their uh, for their position. And they played these game these teams close. They gave they gave Wells a tough game. Wells pulled away at the end, but it was tied at halftime. And so I I don't know if they could beat Lisbon, but they're gonna, I, I don't expect us to be Lisbon's running away and burying them early. I think it's going to be a close game at, at least sure. for the early going. Um, what are you looking at from your end? Oh, so, so many games. Um, <laughs> well, in the Pine Tree Conference Class B, the lawrence Messalonski game has huge implications as to, you know, who's going to end up playing whom in the in the playoffs. Uh, winner of that could be the first-place team. Um, in Class D South, Madison playing Spruce Mountain. Madison, new to the league, uh, has a chance to wrap up the number uh, two seed. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that should be an interesting game. In Class D North, Winthrop playing a crossover game at Mount View. Mount View needs this game to make the playoffs. And then uh, and a game I'm interested in Class C North is uh, Winslow at MCI. MCI struggled a little bit early on in their, their new conference, and now they've got a couple wins under the belt in uh, number three seed. And if they can you know play well against the Black Raiders or even beat them, they could 
you know, earn a, a home game in the first round of their first playoffs at the, the higher division. Always big games. It's like it's the last week of the season. Or yeah, it's almost like they matter. It's hard, hard to believe it's the last yeah. game of the season, but there it, we are. It is. I mean, it seems like every game it's being played, it's, you know, in the mid-60s and sunny during the day. It's, <laughs> that's wait a minute, our, our, now it's dark at kickoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. So, yeah. You know, I say that now it's starting to get cold again, but yeah. oh well. Great. All right, well, that's it for us this week. Enjoy whatever games you can get out to. We'll see you next time on Gridiron Gurus when we talk high school playoffs.